you know, they're not the weird gay, they're not the weird club, I'd rather with Arno. Because it's mostly how, well, it's how I reckon we started back in the, in the day. Because everybody wanted them to be together and even though it looked like a gang in a club, that's what you're looking for, is for your family. And I guess that's what the 501s are doing when they come back and they're looking for their family. Uh, we're not going after innocent people here, we're going after the most serious criminals. Outlaw motorcycle gang members are the biggest distributors of drugs in this country. We are looking at those criminals who are identified by the police and intelligence agencies around the country that are the highest value targets. You know, it might be presidents, vice presidents, treasurers, senior patch members, um, you know, and, and, and targeting those really high-end gangs in Australia. So, you know, for instance, we've seen common two heroes arriving here, banditos, rebels, uh, they, you know, um, mongrel mob, black power, you know, all with that affiliation association to multiple gangs in Australia. Uh, they justified on the grounds of community safety and, and national security. Um, their argument is they're concerned about the proliferation of some forms of crime and particularly organised crime and they would you know, use whatever tools they've got, uh, including deportation, um, to reduce the, the problems that go with that. It's creating problems for us, potentially, um, but it doesn't answer the fundamental problem that Australia says it's trying to fix. New Zealand gangs have traditionally had a fairly well-defined culture, tended to be sort of more of the drop-out type thing, whereas the Australians have been a little different to that. You know, this idea of the Nike bikey, the um, designer clothes, the bling, the jewellery and all this type of thing, have meant that they operate in slightly different ways than New Zealand gangs. They brought back, we think, you know, significant tradecraft with them. They also brought back significant international connections. And, and really that changed the scene for us here. Really what we have now is glo illegal globalisation. You have criminal groups who are gathering revenue by all sorts of ways, but the best way right now is methamphetamine. We are seeing more of a presence of gangs in small town New Zealand than we have previously. A remarkable phenomenon, really. For a very long time, the country, as one gang member put it to me, um, and it kind of works for an analogy, is that the country was in checkmate, that New Zealand had been divided up and everybody knew everybody else's area and so they so the so the politics were quite easy now that's become um, incredibly messy incredibly messy and so when you move into another area you either need to seek permission or you do it with force um, there are only those two ways and 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 frankly permissions aren't often given you know the gangs didn't make that stuff someone told them how to make it or someone's making it for them so you sort of got to backtrack and see the whole story rather than part of the story. At the, at the bottom of the cliff, there's, that's where the gangs are. That's what I see. Because that's what the police focus on. They're not focused on who's doing all the stuff to get it here. Stuart Nash and the police are working on a, a, a program at the moment to, to deal with it um, as part of the kind of the organised crime sort of approach we're taking. But part of it is to have some um, responses to the fact that you know some of the the gang or the growing gang presence in New Zealand comes from those deportees. Well the only thing I can see changing is just giving other people more options <laughs> to um, join clubs. Well it's probably a bad thing it's because it's probably all the ones that couldn't cut the, cut the grade with the rest of the clubs. <laughs>